In the view here, you see my Singer 1588 set up as a hand crank. And um, last night or yesterday, I used it to make this pair of pants for my rabbit, Bunny. Um, Blue is the name of the rabbit. Now, um, these country rabbits by McCall's are adorable. And as I had mentioned, I had given my son one when he was little that he ended up holding on to for a long time. And it was his best friend. Um, but in addition, the reason I like rabbits, we've always had eastern cottontails around. Always. Um, everywhere I've ever lived, there's been little eastern cottontails around. And they're so friendly. And um, I don't know where the rabbit has been lately um, that we have in the backyard now, but it used to come and sit under the tree. And um, anyway, we've always had rabbits. I've also had house rabbits. We had a black long hair Angora rabbit named Tootles, and we had um, my little rabbit, Boo Boo. His real name was Bugs Bunny, and um, he was a fuzzy lop, which kind of like an Angora, they just have long fuzzy hair, long ears that droop. He was a wonderful rabbit, and we used to keep them in the house. Um, Tootles became a little bit aggressive and was running around the house and I was afraid he was going to chew wires and stuff. So he ended up, I had to give him to a program where they take rabbits to schools and teach children about rabbits. And then we got Boo Boo or Bugs Bunny and um, he, um, we had him for a long time. We had a hutch outside and we had a whole setup inside and he would go out for the day and then come back in at night and he had a playpen it was it was something it gave my son a wonderful opportunity to get to know normally what is an outside animal as a friend and doing that with children allows them um, you know, you don't want them walking up to a bear to say hello, but, and there is a story about that, believe it or not, camping and the bear dump, um, but with the rabbit, he got to show the gentleness that rabbits need. So now, as an adult or as an older child, when he was outside and saw a rabbit, he knew what they needed. So it, it, it was educational for him, but... I'm telling you, Bugs was the best little rabbit. It was He was like a cat. He was litter box trained. Um, he used to sit on our laps. The biggest deal was uh, trimming his nails. But he used to sit on my lap with his feet out, waiting for his nails to be trimmed. He was amazing. And we had him for a long time, and he eventually got cancer. And I had to have him put to sleep, and I was heartbroken. And I think that's part of the reason why the rabbits got put away for a while, because it was hard to think about rabbits, because I didn't have Boo-Boo. Um, but anyway, and I don't know why we started calling him Boo-Boo, because um, maybe after Boo-Boo with Yogi and Boo-Boo. I don't know why. His real name was Bugs Bunny. But anyway, last night, yesterday, I made this pair of pants. Um, for this rabbit on my 1588 hand crank. Now, not that any of you are really going to care, but what's going on with my leg is um, I got hit by lightning in 2009, and my left side is weaker than my right side. So basically, since then, I use my right leg more than my left leg because my left leg is weaker. And unfortunately, what I've done now is overused my right leg, and it's in pain and torn, and my left leg is weak. So the treadles are causing me a lot of problems. And I was thinking about this last night, and I really could use one of the electrics and just use my 
left foot on the foot pedal except that my ankle tends to give out and I have to build up my left leg before I can completely rest my right leg so it's like a whole little therapy program now physical therapy program so it's better for me for the time being to use a hand crank so because I have to make jeans and sweatshirts and stuff I have the 1588 here and um, because in some ways it's easier I whip these pants up in about 20 minutes there are uh, two pattern pieces from the McCall's uh, 3760 and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pair of them with a Model 20. Now, I my habit is to use a big full-size machine, I guess, if I have one. But at the same time, um, there's no heavy seams in these at all. And if you follow the directions, um, what I ran into with a problem, it's not really a problem, but what I needed a big machine for was attaching the suspenders on the front after you've already closed the elastic casing. So it's a lot of layers to go through to get the suspenders on there right. And that would be the challenge for a Model 20. So what I'm going to do, um, I have a lot of paperwork to do, but I hope later today to start a pair of pants for the bunny on a Model 20. And I'm using this as kind of a challenge of um, not however they marketed the Model 20s because they marketed them for children but also as light household duty. I want to see if it can do things like gathering. Supposedly, and I haven't done it yet on, on them, but if you just tighten the tension, you can do the gathering. And I was looking at some of the bunny outfits, and I mean, I have really tight gathering on the aprons and on the dresses that I would have done by doing a basting stitch and then pulling up the threads. So I want to see, um, not necessarily on the pants, but I want to see how that works on a Model 20. So there is Blue, and her name is now going to be Boo Boo Blue because I'm switching to hand cranks and bunnies because my, my leg is hurt. And um, we're going to see if I can make a pair of pants like that on a Model 20 and not have a problem with getting the suspenders on. There's one um, in the directions on the pattern they tell you to attach the suspenders on the back before you make the casing and then fold them in and I never do it that way I I make the pants and then I add the suspenders and that would be a problem with the Model 20 I think because when I have a big heavy duty machine like this I can just plow through anything but with the Model 20 um, it might be good for me to actually go by the directions instead of just doing it myself. So I'm going to see, and that's going to be a Model 20 project. Now, a lot of people don't like the Model 20s, and they think they're for children, and maybe maybe they are, and for now, I'm not getting rid of um, the 1588. I'm also not going to try and do things with my left foot because I my left ankle is weak anyway and I think I'll just end up um, damaging both legs so I have to kind of follow a fitness program for this a therapy program and that's going to leave me with two hand cranks a model 20 and a 1588 and in this video I'll be making um, a pair of pants for a McCall's country bunny in um, with using a model 20 a couple of things to add. If you're thinking of getting a house rabbit, um, fuzzy lops are great. The, um, I think they're called Netherland Dwarfs, are very popular, but you have to be careful because their teeth overgrow. 
and you have to take them to the vet to have their teeth trimmed sometimes, I think. Or there's something about their teeth. We, d we didn't run into that with Boo Boo. Um, but at the same time, the, you know, the animal interaction, when we had bugs and, and toodles, we also had two cats. So, um, and the cats were hysterical because they would, when he was in the house and had a playpen, he had like a kid's toddler's playpen. And that was his space. And the cats would jump in there with him and play with him and then jump out again. They all got along. N nobody went after each other. Um, the two cats themselves were, we, we have been so lucky with the animals we've had. One was Wilbur, who was a stray um, that we took in. Somebody had abandoned him. He was an Egyptian Mao. And beautiful, tall, lanky. Um, most people would call him a brown tabby, but he had spots. Um, beautiful cat. And the other one was Sophie, who was my son's kitten. And the dog officer had called me and asked me if I could take a kitten a uh, cat and, a, and her kittens had been thrown out in the snow and could I take a kitten and we picked the runt who was Sophie because um, and when the vet said no take another one we don't expect her to make it and she was the smallest and she fit in the palm of my hand at six weeks old she wasn't expected to live I, I had to um, they were taking them away from the mother early because the mother was under so much stress for being abandoned and everything. And um, I think she was six weeks. It, it might have been five weeks. But anyway, I had to feed her with a dropper every three hours for about two weeks. And she had her own pet crate, which was like a, a three-foot pet crate for a, like a, a small dog. And she would hide in the corner of the crate with her towels, and, and I gave her a stuffed toy. And she was this tiny little thing. And she became my son's cat, and she would come barreling out of that crate and jump up on his bed and snuggle up with him. Anyway, she never got bigger than, than six pounds and about the size of a squirrel. And she lived to be about um, 15 years old. And she was another comedian. My dog now is a comedian, but Sophie was a comedian. She would do things like she thought she could get away with everything. She one time, and I know I'm rambling here about the animals, but um, she was in one of the bathrooms on the counter and decided to start playing with the Mentadent toothpaste. And she would push the, the top thing down and the toothpaste would come out and she was eating the toothpaste. And if you've ever used Mentadent, it foams. It's got an oxidizing thing. So she came running through the house foaming at the mouth. And I spent 30 minutes on the phone on a Saturday night with a vet paying like $75 for the phone call because I thought she had been poisoned. And while I'm waiting for him to look through his book to see what could be wrong with her, I walk into the bathroom and there's a toothpaste all over the counter. And I, I said to him, wait a minute, she might have done this herself. And she did. It was meant to dent toothpaste. And, I mean, those are the kind of things that she did. These, so she, here she is, this little munchkin thing the size of a squirrel. And Bugs was... Um, about eight or nine pounds, maybe ten pounds. He was pretty big. And for a rabbit, he was pretty big. And um, they used to play. They used to get along. So if you're thinking of having a house rabbit, I would recommend that you have a playpen so they don't chew wires because that will kill them. And I don't know why they have a habit of doing that. They like to chew things like woodwork, wires. Um, we gave him wooden blocks to chew on, and that will keep their teeth trimmed. But anyway, this is kind of off topic, but at the same time, right on topic. My father even comes in here. I mean, some people in my family thought I was a little bit nuts having 
um, rabbits. But the whole American values thing that I've talked about with country bunnies and Fred and my dad and what people fight for and the American values, I have, as you have seen, many, many vinyl dolls, commercial dolls. For some reason, stuffed dolls have a special place um, in the whole realm of things. A little bit different from commercial dolls, not only because you make them yourself, but maybe because you make them yourself and you're creating your own friend. Whereas when you buy an American Girl doll, you're buying Samantha or you're buying Kaya um, or Addie. You know, you're buying the story, the history, the whole thing. This way you make your own history. And, you know, like here I am, still a kid at my age, and now her name is Boo Boo Blue, but it fits. You know, so they become... I think, in some ways, more a part of the family, and it's more thrifty, and I am so tempted to get my brand new brother out that I just, I got so excited about the flower foot on the brother and twin needle, and here I am with a 1937 1588 hand crank, knowing it's better for me to use this, but remembering my father, the, and nothing against foreigners in any way, but the brother is made in China. When the motor burns out on the brother, I would throw that away and buy another one. There is no motor to burn out on a good old American singer. This machine will last longer than I will. And that brings in the rest of the family. American values. Um, I'm sitting here a few minutes ago, and I said, why am I doing it this way? I have a brand new brother, practically. And the first thing that came to my mind was because of Dad. And, you know, he was a veteran, and yeah, I've gone off the deep end about veterans. But at the same time, singer, or white, but I tend to lean toward, this, toward the singers, you just can't make a machine like this. And even though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, it's going to be the same with the Model 20, but on a different scale because it's a chain stitch machine. So it's like American life. Rabbits, stuffed rabbits, um, dolls, education, foundations. Now, Singer, I... I have often emailed them and said, could you please start making the machines in America again? And of course they pay no attention to me. So I'll use this one. And I'll use the Model 20 to make Boo Boo Blue some pants. And I am sorry to be rambling a little here, but I want to mention Grandma's, um, what was Grandma's 99. I had converted it to a hand crank and I still want it to be a hand crank. I ran into two things that I want to mention if you're thinking of doing that, and I had uploaded all those videos on how to do it. Um, I put the motor back on, and right now it's original the way that my, my grandmother had it. Now, um, I've mentioned in other videos that this machine um, was owned by a professional seamstress originally, and that seamstress sewed all my mother's baby clothes. And when the seamstress passed away, her family gave the machine to my grandmother. Now, I don't know if that was because my grandmother gave her so much business or if they just liked my grandmother. My grandmother was um, well liked by a lot of people. But they gave her the singer and my grandmother used it um, I think she was about late, she was in her late 70s, early 80s when she finally gave it to me. And so I put, I know that at this point the motor is 83 years old. So I have good cords on it. it, the wiring looks good, but the motor is 83 years old. 
so I want it to be a hand crank. I put it back as original because when I put the, um, I, I have a spoked wheel to put on the hand wheel. And um, when I convert it though, I lose the light. The hand wheel um, is fine, but the, uh, and the bobbin works and everything, but the crank itself was hitting the oil can holder on the inside of the lid. So I had to take that out of the inside of the lid. And basically, I'm, I'm almost stripping the machine and obviously taking things out of the lid. So that became a big change that I'm not sure I'm ready for yet. Um, so right now, it's the way that my grandmother had it. But I think it needs to be a hand crank. I did put my small new replacement motor on it. And it's, it's not the same because, um, yeah, it's, it's an electric machine. And yeah, it's still what grandma had. It's not the same. I think that because of who I am, it has to be a hand crank. I'm using the 1588 right now instead of this one as a hand crank because... I'm not undecided about converting it. I just have to get used to the idea that I'm going to be changing the lid to the case. I'm going to be changing the machine. And it's going to just take me probably a couple of weeks to get used to the idea that it's safer for me to use it as a hand crank. Both my grandmother and my mother would be freaking out if they knew I was plugging this in and it, the motor's 83 years old, even if all the wiring is good. So I just wanted to make that mention because I had uploaded videos about converting it, and I, I do intend to do that. If I'm, um, if I end up having to move to a very small apartment it probably will be grandma's as a hand crank, the 99, that I take. Um, but I have to keep this machine. So I just have to get used to that idea. And I don't know what I'm going to do about the 1591 because I can't convert that to a hand crank. I may have to learn how to fix a 1591 motor, which is a whole... There's nothing wrong with the motor either um, on that one, but the machine is 65 years old. So... All the wiring is good on it, um, but it's still 65 years old. So those are where those two stand. They still are the two that I have to keep, but I'm considering um, the changes that have to be made to at least this machine and its case in order to keep it as a hand crank. Now finally I'll get to the Model 20 project. This is a pillowcase. That was my mother's. And um, it's a pretty pillowcase that I, I just have kept because it's a pretty pillowcase that was my mother's. And I think I'm going to use this to make the pants for the rabbit um, on the Model 20. And this, again, will be another challenge. I can use, I have some enough material where I can use um, high-quality quilting cotton. Pillowcases and sheets are... Um, usually have a higher thread count, which means they're a little bit more difficult to sew through if you're going to have a problem sewing through them. For example, if you have a dull needle, you'll have more of a problem on percale sheets than you will on quilting cotton. So, but at the same time, old pillowcases or old sheets are a wonderful fabric resource. And, um, you know, it's great to go to Keepsake Quilting and look at their fabrics and or quilts and other comforts and look at their fabrics and say, oh, I love that one. You price out a quilt to make a quilt can run you two or three hundred dollars. With fabric running at eight ninety nine dollars a yard for an average, pillowcases and sheets have to be a resource, especially when you're talking about doll or... Um, decorative items. So I'm going to use this pillowcase which is big enough to make a pair of pants um, for a rabbit 
and we'll see how that goes on a Model 20. The other thing is, um, you know, I'm an artist, and the brother with the flower foot, I, w I really was so excited because I was thinking, I can put these all over fabric, and it's like Spirograph. That, that is what all those um, designs reminded me of, is Spirograph. Making circles with a Model 20 takes a little bit more patience than it does with a brother and a flower foot, but um, it can be done. So I'm also thinking of making just muslin pants in the future on a Model 20 and using that same Model 20 and all different color threads to make designs all over the pants or the shirt or or whatever depending on what fabric I have I happen to right now have quite a bit of muslin that is kind of earmarked for a quilt but I have to see how much I have I should have enough to make a couple of pair of pants for a rabbit and by using the model 20 and making designs that are similar to the flower foot and a modern machine I can come up with the same effect so it's really, um, it is old versus new, but the, with all the attachments that the uh, vintage singers had available, you can get the same effects. Um, you just have to do it a little bit differently. But we're going to be using an old pillowcase to make a pair of pants for a bunny on a Model 20. And I'm going to end this part of the video um, here because I've been babbling so much and I will pick up in part two with starting the pants on a Model 20. Now of course the Model 20s didn't come with any attachments and the trick to them is supposed to be the tension and that's what we're going to find out in the future but um, what I'll do is end this here and part two will start with making the pants on the Model 20.